Uh, it's going to be a reflection about the decline of the civil liberties in France and really the very sad and dramatic year that France has experienced from the start of the year in 2015 with the attacks on Charlie Hebdo um, to the recent attacks in Paris this November. All of that is tragic as it is, but sadly this has also had the effect of um, increasing push by the French government to put legal frameworks in place to not really make things easier or better for citizens, but for the secret services in France. And that is what uh, the two speakers in this talk will be addressing right now, as well as attempts of French NGOs to push against this kind of legislation. So I'd like you to give a really, really big, warm and respectful welcome to our next two speakers. Tazi Den, who is the co-founder of a non-profit ISP in France and also the member of a federation of non-profit ISPs, and Adrien Charmé, who's the campaign coordinator at La Croix d'Atur du Net. Applause, please. Oh, please. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Um, so I have to warn you, I have to do a little disclaimer. This talk will be very depressing. So keep, keep calm, <laughs> please keep calm. Hug your neighbor, uh, everything will be okay. And let's go. So we wanted to give this talk because as you have seen, uh, a lot of things has happened in France all this year, Geraldine said it. And so we wanted to share this with you and to, to give you an insight on what's going on. So yeah, let's start, sorry, with 2015 uh, in a nutshell. Yes, uh, 2015 was a very black year in France for freedom and marked by terrorism attacks and security and uh, measure vote in a permanent atmosphere of terror. Uh, it began with the Charlie's attacks in January, followed by the intelligence law in March, then by an international surveillance law in September, then by November attacks and now the state of emergency and new threats about liberties. Yeah, so... The thing is, it's not just 2015, it started uh, uh, a while back and um, since 2013 actually there have been several measures and laws uh, put in place and one of the first is a military planning act, uh, so it was kind of the first uh, reaction to the post uh, to the Snowden revelations in France uh, and um, so this uh, this general law on military planning included a, a measure uh, about giving the, an administrative access uh, for the police to the ISP networks, uh, giving them access to metadata in real time. Yes, and um, this measure was voted to protect fundamental uh, interests of France against economic espionage and terrorism, and it was for us the beginning of the, of the problem. Then, in 2014, we had a new law about terrorism uh, voted in um, an emergency process because urging the parliament is a new, new way of democracy in France when you talk about terrorism. And uh, there were several measures mostly inefficient to prevent people from becoming terrorists. And one of them was the vote of a provision to allow police to block websites for apologia and glorification of terrorism. Very. Uh, uh, strange uh, formulation, and police can directly ask the ISP to block by DNS uh, access to websites. And of course, in, it is um, with uh, no control by judge, uh, the list of blocked websites uh, remains secret, and uh, you have no information to citizens and to the owners of the websites. Yeah, and that's not uh, all for this law. Also, uh, glorification of terrorism was removed from the the only law framing freedom of speech in France, the, the, and so it was put into the, the penal code. Um, and the, the effect of this is that, is like, is that glorifying terrorism uh, is now judged like an act of terrorism itself, like it's ruled by the same judges and so on. Um, and also the, the sanctions, uh, if this glorification is made using the internet, are increased. And after Charlie attacks in uh, January uh, this year, many people were judged for uh, glorification of terrorism. And a lot of them were drunk people or very young people. And it shows the problem to define exactly what is glorification of terrorism. So that was for 2014. And then came uh, 2015 and the intelligence law. 
Um, it was a law prepared since two years approximately, and the January attacks uh, offered a window, opened a window for the government to, to push the law. Uh, and, yeah. more, more easily. and during two months between the Charlie's attacks in January and the presentation of the law in March, um, it, it, well, it was an intense debate in France about must we have our French Patriot Act or not. And Internet was always presented as uh, responsible for radicalization or, uh, and terrorism. And encryption was targeted in France and in other mm -hmm. countries like uh, uh, United Ki Kingdom, for example, even, even if nothing proved that encryption was used by terrorists. And even Luz, a uh, cartoonist, a famous cartoonist from Charlie Hebdo, was not a fool about all this. And he made this wonderful uh, cartoon about uh, the situation. And I think it's very, uh, it, it speaks by, by itself. So. What were the arguments for the law? Yes, you are the government's um, arguments and the reality. And the first arguments were that uh, the objective of the law uh, is to create a legal framework for intelligence services. But in fact, France was under the threat to be condemned by the European Court of Human Rights. So it was uh, very um, uh, complicated for the government. Yeah. And then also, uh, one argument of the, the government was it, we, we needed to replace the only law on the matter, on, on surveillance. It dated back to 1990, uh, 1991. Uh, but in fact, it was only a, a question of extending uh, the surveillance to internet and mobile communication, which was not uh, previously uh, in, the, in the law. The third argument was uh, that the government wanted to legalize existing practice and needs of the service, which were in a gray zone. They call it a legal practices, not um, not uh, black, not white, but a gray zone. But it was just illegal practices and used probably since many years by the services. One other argument was that, well, you see, this law is bringing an independent control on the on the surveillance activities and the intelligence activities. But in fact, uh, there was the real control is still in the in the hands of the prime minister. And uh, com there is a the commission, but the commission has just uh, consultative advice. Yeah. And so one other argument is that, was that you see it's giving the citizen a way to challenge the surveillance now that it's framed and so on. Uh, but actually, <laughs> yes, uh, in fact, different secrecy can be opposed at each step of the, the citizen challenge. And the process is not under, judi under uh, judiciary court, so you cannot. Uh, uh, challenge the state. So here for the, the arguments that we heard uh, during the, the debate, but what is the scope of this intelligence law? That's something very interesting because obviously its scope, uh, the, 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 it was sell, uh, sold uh, in, the, in the media as something targeting, uh, targeting terrorism, uh, but actually there are uh, all sorts of uh, categories of people or actions that are concerned by the law, like collective violence, uh, likely to seriously harm public peace. That's something very broad and very uh, 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 vague. Uh, and so there are also uh, economic and... Uh, and scientific strategic interests of France and uh, international commitments. And uh, basically everything and everyone is concerned. And for example, a protester against nuclear power can even fit in several of these categories. Mm. And the law uh, legalize offensive and defensive uh, espionage. Yeah, and we don't have the time to cover all this. And there is also immunity for the uh, intelligence services uh, in the law. Uh, but let's see some of the measures, uh, the concrete measures that are included in it. So obviously, there is targeted surveillance, like keyloggers, geolocalization, microphone cameras are included in the law, are allowed by the law. Uh, there are also IMC catchers, uh, and uh, one of the things that crystallized the, the debate was black boxes uh, that were to be put into ISP networks, hosting providers and, and access providers, uh, so that uh, these black boxes can detect weak signals uh, and algor algor algorithmically and uh, yes, so and they, they put it into the law in France. In, uh, yeah, in this the is into the law. law. It's crazy. So, obviously, we were against the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were not very happy and with we, this. We 
start the campaign uh, against the surveillance law immediately and coordinate a large coalition of, of opponents. And our slogan was, uh, everyone can be under surveillance, and was detailed on a community website, uh, you are here, uh, sous surveillance.fr, it means under surveillance.fr. Uh, so yeah, the mobilization was really broad and it, 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 uh, it came up very fast uh, with not just hacktivists, but also NGOs, lawyers, judges, journalists, trade unions, digital economy also. Um, and so we and yes, and we started uh, with, um, by a press conference in La Quadrature office, uh, and it was not by the newspaper at the, as the beginning of opponents' uh, campaign. And we were surprised to be at the, at the center of the coalition, but um, I think we are used to be faster than all the NGOs because we, we know how to mobilize, to, to analyze, and to campaign, and that gives us more experience at internet ways to organize. Yeah, so the organization, uh, the, the, not the organization, the opposition uh, grew uh, all around the debate. At first, at the very beginning, very few members of parliament were against the law. It was really something that was going to pass. It was a, it was a lost battle. Um, but uh, a very large citizen mobilization um, has been organized through uh, LQ, uh, La Quadrature du Net tools. Yes, like we, we used, um, for example, the PFON, which which is a, a website to facilitate calls to members of parliament. Uh, the missing unit is um, a phone number. And uh, we just had five weeks uh, to convince uh, members of parliament that it was a very, very rude campaign. But at the day of the vote in the National Assembly, 20% uh, of members of parliament vote against the law. And for us, it was, it was very, uh, it was like a, a little victory. victory yeah. <laughs> and, And three weeks later, we have the same progress in the Senate with, uh, at the beginning, uh, zero, nobody, nobody yeah. <laughs> against the law, and at the end, 20% of the senators against the law. And during all the campaign, we provided legal amendments and explanation to the member of parliament. We explained again and again the law to politicians, to the media, in order to change the public and political view on, on the law. And it worked. Because yes, it worked, because despite uh, the, the, the bad result, we are proud to have forced the government to justify himself every time about freedom. And now, uh, the, the, the law was called the intelligence law at the beginning in, in media, and at the end was called the surveillance law. And for us, it, it was very important to change the world. Yeah. So. This is not uh, all. Uh, we, we decided to also take the legal uh, fight, and so we uh, there was a, a, a small group of people um, who decided to, to write a, a, um, an amicus curiae. It's a, a document that you can provide, that you can that you can contribute to a judiciary debate, uh, and so. 122 pages were written describing uh, what was wrong in the law. Uh, and comparing with the European uh, Commitments of France and the European Court of Justice case law. And it was to, to sustain the appeal uh, launched by 60 members of the Parliament to, to, um, before the Constitutional Council to asking the law to be censored. And that's something like this, you can read it on our website. Yeah, and so this was written not just by uh, lawyers, but also by, by, with a team of lawyers and activists. That is very interesting. And we put it online so that people can review it, and every people can review it and, and give us feedbacks and comments and fixes. And so it worked very well, like very, very well. We had 500 uh, modifications in 24 hours. We were like the first surprise to have so many comments. And so this is a proof that hackers and lawyers can work together and do pretty cool stuff. Um, in July, the Constitutional Council validated the law, except... <laughs> One small part, a, nothing. A, a small part all the provision about international surveillance. Um, it's not to say that international surveillance is prohibited, of course, uh, just to force the parliament to vote explicitly the measure and not just vote for a future uh, secret decree to organize international surveillance. So the law was reintroduced uh, before yes. the parliament in September. Yes. Uh, it, uh, it has been a nightmare, like La Quadrature de Net was alone on this. Yes. Um, no for debate. The, mm, the, the, the most uh, N NGOs in France, it was too fast, only three weeks to, to campaign, so we were alone. 
And so, um, uh, the law legalized surveillance on all traffic going in and out of France. This is obviously mass surveillance and has been clearly voted in the law. As, as such. At is, it, it's written in the law, no targeted surveillance. So it's the mass surveillance uh, was voted. And the law states that authorization uh, to spy are given for uh, entire countries, for uh, companies, or for geographical zones, so um, without any prior control. And the law was uh, has been voted in three weeks without any serious debate presented just at the patch to the intelligence law. Yeah, yes, so you would patch. say <laughs> traffic going out in, in and out of France, it's nothing like, well, <clears throat> this is a map of cable, cables uh, going in and out, in and out, of, out of, France. of France, so this is pretty scary. Um, so at this very moment, uh, we were like, okay, the battle is lost. Was well, the end of October? Yeah, end of October, but we were like, okay, now it's kind of finished. We are, we are still, we have still a world to change. Uh, yes, it's the end of a very hard period, mm. and we would continue uh, our positive agenda and campaign for uh, rights and freedom uh, on the internet, net neutrality, data protection, copyright reform, some very positive things. And then, and then came the, um, the November second attacks. attacks. Uh, and immediately after the attacks, the attacks took place at uh, a Friday evening at 10 p.m. And at 11 p.m., the French president declared a state of emergency. Uh, and the day so after, the prime minister declared that a law uh, will be voted the next week to extend the state of emergency in its perimeter and uh, its duration. duration for three months. And the law was voted with only six votes against uh, under a very massive pressure of the Prime Minister and the Minister of uh, Interior Affairs. So let's see what is the state of emergency. You, you have to see that it's a, a suspension of separation of powers. It's the, something very exceptional. And um, it allows the police to do searches 24-7 without any judiciary control. Uh, there are also house arrests. Um, people can be forced to stay at home 12 hours per day uh, and not quit a specific area. And also, um, websites can be yes, blocked out. There, and, and there, provision, have been, there have uh, been new provisions. Yes, yeah. new provision uh, adopted um, uh, last month. So, uh, electronic search is allowed into any system accessible during a police search. Any, uh, Which means uh, that if device. the police come uh, at your place and see that it can access from your computer other computers, it can also copy the data of these servers or, or stuff or devices. Yes, and websites can be blocked directly by an order, by decision from the Minister of Interior Affairs. Mm. And uh, there are uh, provision uh, about dissolution of formal groups or organization without any judgment and forever including after the yeah. end of the state of emergency. And all of this is not uh, operates uh, with a judge advice. It's just with the intelligence services information. You have not to, to, to uh, prove something before, before um, uh, block a website or make a uh, house arrest or police search. Yeah, so l let us give you some numbers of the, wh what happened. So until now, we, we have uh, numbers given by the French National Assembly, some kind of reporting. Uh, and so far, there, uh, as of actually the, the December the, the 17th, there have been more than 2,700 police searches, uh, 368 house arrests, and no websites blocked. But the well, internet that, that, is also always that, presented as the main problem. Yeah, internet was the main problem. So and um, we decided to document the disaster uh, on the on the La Quadrature uh, wiki with the help of people on the internet and. Every day, every article on a newspaper about the state of emergency is uh, crowdsourced on, uh, on our wiki. And for us, it's very important to, to grow the awareness of people and politicians before voting next measure. So at this moment, when we were documenting the disaster, we were realizing that the targets uh, of these searches and house arrest uh, were not uh, all the time terrorists, um, but they were uh, like 
everybody that could cause danger to public peace uh, would be considered dangerous by, by the police and the Minister of Interior Affairs. So there were Muslims, anarchists, uh, climate conference activists. And also there have been, um, during the, the conference, uh, the climate conference, there have been demonstrations uh, prohibited and people are also arrested. So this was not just uh, about terrorism, uh, it was very broad and uh, very far. And there is clearly logic going on um, throughout all the laws we have been discussing since the beginning of this talk, and it's clearly a minority, minority report uh, um, uh, kind of way of thinking. Like they want to prevent the crime before they happen, and so they, they are willing to do whatever they want to avoid justice and to do people uh, the administrative way through the, the police and, and, and so on. And who's next? We, we, um, we are afraid to be targeting in the next day or a month. Uh, for example, one, the provision about association and uh, organization targets, facilitation or encouragement on committing dangerous acts. Um, and we ask uh, ourselves, um, providing a Tor exit node, promote encryption, is it encouraging? Uh, or facilitating? For facilitating. Um, so we don't know, and um, uh, that is a part of, a, of the problem. When just the police can um, decide for the, the, the society uh, who is dangerous or not, you don't have the rules, you cannot uh, know if you are targeted or not. Yeah, and so this is pretty bad, but that's not uh, enough, that's not finished. There is a constitutional reform that has been announced a few days ago. Uh, it was announced since the attacks, but the details were published a few days ago. And what has been announced is mainly two things. Uh, the first is that the state of emergency will be written directly into the Constitution. It, it's, it's very important to be not attacked by a judgment later. Yeah, so that it's kind of protected. And also, it's... Starting, uh, starting now in France, there is, there is a huge debate over uh, the second measure, which is deprivation of nationality, which would be a, a, a major change of policy in France, and it's uh, an idea coming from the far right. Uh, and so this is sparkling a, a debate right now. And yes, and, and the debate um, takes place under the threat of new terrorist attacks used by the government to force the parliament uh, into voting the reform. And uh, probably the, the, the constitutional reform will be voted under the state of emergency. And two new bills have been uh, announced for a few days ago about, again, terrorism and uh, organized crime, and they will probably uh, be discussed in January or, or February. And we foresee new attacks on encryption, privacy, citizen rights, especially online, because politicians don't want to understand what's, what is privacy online. It's more easy for them to not know what, uh, what yeah. it means. So what is at stake? Clearly what's going on, there is a shock doctrine uh, implementing a permanent state of exception in France. Uh, we are seeing that uh, there is Definitely some, uh, the, the willing to avoid uh, the judiciary powers at any will, like to put more powers into the police and into the intelligence services, uh, and, and more and more pressure put on the internet, like. Yes, it's always presented by the government uh, as a propaganda tool for uh, terrorists. And we think that counter-terrorism seems to be uh, the new policy of the French government, and it's, um, a symbol of the general crisis of democracy in France, yeah. we think. So we have to adapt and to find a counter strategy. Uh, first, you have to acknowledge that digital freedom is a lie. There is just freedom, <laughs> plain and simple. You, you, you need to refuse the shock doctrine, stay alert and protect yourself, help people to understand the situation, give them tools to, to hack, to protect themselves against surveillance and bad policy. Uh, and, and you have to anticipate the threat and be careful about the discourse of the few governments. Mm. And for us, um, since the beginning of this year, uh, it means in La Quadrature and other NGOs, 
um, systematic public campaign, even if we know that we will lose, because it's very important to document the facts. Um, it requires building our storytelling uh, about the, the, the um, events and not just um, uh, have the government storytelling to prepare and conduct uh, legal action every time and everywhere before the French justice and the uh, European justice. It also means, and that's something very important, that we must document the disaster. Uh, we we, we no, assume no, that yeah. <laughs> document the disaster, like we did with the, the wiki page. And more than anything, um, it means taking part and building coalition with groups and organizations that we are not used to work with, uh, because we must enlarge the basis of the op opposition. Yeah, we are not alone. It's not just a digital thing. It's we are all concerned. So um, one very last important thing is we spoke about France, but it can be uh, in your country very soon. I don't hope, but you should stay alert, as I said. Uh, even as we speak, there are countries like Tunisia that are using uh, what is going on in France to promote the same schemes, the same uh, shock doctrine, and so on. They are saying, hey, it's the country of human rights. Why can't we do the same thing? And so, well, I'm sorry, but even the country of human rights can turn into a police state. So, as a few words of advice to, to conclude this talk, stay safe, help others, and encrypt all the things. Thank you. And we have the time for questions. Thank you very much to the two of you. I'm going to check my... We have four minutes left, but I know that you're also going to do an extended Q&A because there's not that much time now. Do you want to announce that quickly? Yeah, so we are, it was very short slot, so 30 minutes is very short to, to talk about all the details of what we've shown. So we felt that it would be good to have a, a, a more, a, a more time to, to, to elaborate on that if you're interested. So please join us in, uh, in the all A1 uh, in uh, 30 minutes. Uh, and so we will discuss about going beyond the and state and of with emergency. Uh, with all um, um, other people from La Quadrature and the uh, French NGOs. Yeah, sure. So. And if you cannot come, join us at the tea house, have some tea, and be welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>